But in that culture, the inheritance was given after the death of the father. So in essence, what this son was saying to his father is, you're better off dead to me. Father graciously divides his assets, gives his youngest son his inheritance. Jesus says that the son went into a far country. And there for a while, he lived it up. Man, when you've got money, when you're buying drinks, everybody likes you. And he lived that life. He lived a life of enjoyment for a season. He lived a life of fulfillment for a season. He lived a life of popularity for a season. He lived a a life where, where he was in charge for a season. Then a famine came, and the wealth ran out. And all that he had built on his own, he lost. The story picks up with this son sitting, feeding pigs. Of course, to this audience that Jesus was speaking to, you know, some of us may be familiar with, with pigs, that, that, that they're not the, the dumbest animals, but, but maybe they're, we think of them as kind of messy. But, but to these people, pigs were religiously unclean. So not only was this son branded or, or marked as a, as a failure, was, it, was he marked as someone who was rebellious, who had brought shame on his family, but now he sits with an unclean animal. He had basically been written off as unsavable. He's so hungry that he desires to eat the scraps that fall from the pig's mouth. If he, he, he could just eat some of the leftover slop, he feels like that would help him out. Scripture says he came to his senses. He thought, man, the the servants in my father's house have it off better than me. If I I could just go back and beg to be a servant in my father's house, I would have it so much better than this. So he works up the courage and he heads home. He, I'm sure, knew that the law of the day would have said a rebellious son like this was to be taken to the city, to the walls, to a public place and put to death for his rebellion. So so understanding that the son walks back, hoping to be brought back as a servant, but understanding this could be the end of his own life. Jesus gives us the picture of the father out on the porch, watching. We don't know how long he'd been watching and waiting, but I've got a feeling it'd been since he left. He looks down the road and calls in to the house, Mama! He doesn't walk with his head as high as he used to. Mama, there's a little limp in his step, but that's my boy. That's my son. And Jesus tells a story that the father leaps from the porch and runs to his son. And and, and Jewish men in those days would would not run or would would not sprint. That was a a sign of, 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 uh, it was was thought of as as lowly, as as below them, as as uh, undoable. It just wasn't what they would do. And, and, And he sprints to his son. He runs to his son. I imagine if I was that boy, Knowing all that I knew, I would think, man, here comes the sucker punch of all time. He's going to RKO me right here in the middle of the street. But the father reaches the son. He embraces him, welcomes him. He kisses him, which is a sign of honor, places honor on him. But he doesn't just stop there. See, the son had hoped that he could be a servant in his father's house, But his son says, no, 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 no. Bring a robe for my son. And he covers his imperfections. He says, hey, I want to get some new shoes on his feet because I've got a calling and a plan for him. I've got something for him to walk in. He says, kill the fatted calf. Let's have a feast and a celebration. He places a ring on his finger saying, you're not my servant, you're my son. And this is my story, and this is your story. 
This is the story of God's people.